We are exploring Clematis Street in West Palm Beach, Florida. But more about Clematis Street in just a little bit. We've actually been hanging out in West Palm Beach most of the day. We started out the morning at Mount's Botanical Garden. Mount's Botanical Garden is located on 14 acres of land and it represents more than 6,000 species of tropical and subtropical plants. This is our first time visiting Mount's Botanical Garden during the day. The last time we were here was for our 25 Nights of Lights and their annual Christmas display. So we wondered just what it would be like during the daytime, and specifically if there were anything for our children to do. The kids and I are gonna go find the children's maze. So the way that it works on the website, when I looked it up, it kind of gives you a map of the whole garden. And while it is a very beautiful setting, it's not exactly the tranquil, quiet botanical gardens that we're used to visiting in Florida. Everything is numbered, and it looks like the children's maze is number 15. So that's what we're gonna try to find. Which should be a lot of fun because I don't read maps very well. That's not my strength. Anthony can look at a map and it makes total sense to him. I'm not that way. I'm more of a landmark person. Because it's located just behind the Palm Beach International Airport. So everywhere you go in the garden, you can hear jet engines flying overhead and the noisy traffic from the highway just nearby. But even with all the noise, this is really a beautiful botanical garden. It's actually laid out really well. It's the way that they have it manicured and set up. It really is beautiful. But this would probably be a great place to visit if you have a layover in the Palm Beach International Airport. The one thing I wish um, they had was I wish the actual gardens were numbered like they are, they are on the map. So for example, on the map on the website, it says, you know, this type of garden number one, this type of tree garden number two. Um, this area is number three, but it's not numbered like that in the actual garden. So I don't know if we're heading in the right direction. I don't know what number we're on, which I guess I should know that, but since I don't read maps very well, I kind of don't know where we are. <laughs> okay, so this looks a little bit promising. There is a sign right here that says South Path Gazebo Butterfly Garden and Vegetable Garden. So if I remember correctly, that was around kind of where we're going on the map. So we're gonna go that way. We found the Butterfly Garden, which is actually near the children's maze that we want to go to. So we're in the right place. Pierce doesn't love adventures as much as the rest of us do. This is actually a pretty incredible butterfly garden because there are actually so many butterflies. It's a little unusual to actually see a lot of butterflies at butterfly gardens in our experience. This one right here though, she could spend the whole day with this caterpillar. He's loose, so now he's happy. This fort is so cool. So we found the children's maze and Vivian's already trying to figure it out. And I'm just trying to keep Pierce inside of it at this point, because he likes to run away. We found a big giant iguana next to the water. So of course we have to stop and take a look at him. There's also a great koi fish pond over here, and I didn't see anything where you could feed the fish, but I'm sure there's something around like that. For lunch today on Gun Club Road is Gun Club Cafe. This is a great place for country favorites for breakfast and lunch. I got the turkey and dressing with some fried okra and green beans. The Salisbury steak with the mashed potatoes and gravy and green beans. And we got this extra bowl of macaroni and cheese, probably for Pierce, but I might have some too. I got a slice salad and I like it. And also, Bobby wants tomatoes, so I'm sharing. So, what 
apparently this meal comes with dessert, and they offered us a banana split cake, which has like a graham cracker crust, and uh, I think it's like a, there's ice cream and whipped topping and pineapple chunks. Oh, and of course, bananas. This is good. I think the best part is the graham cracker crust. It's really crumbly. It's tasty. It's nap time. So after Vivian napped briefly in the van, we're here at Okihili Park, and she's enjoying the playground. Pierce is still doing a little sleeping. Okihili Park occupies 1,700 acres in West Palm Beach, Florida. And likewise, we've never been here during the day either. Every year at Christmas time, Okihili Park lights off with a drive through Christmas event. Hi there, everybody. It's me, Larry the Lightbulb. All right, look who's joining us. And some of the amenities of this park are the most unique of any park we've ever been to. There's a BMX track, a public golf course, multiple water skiing lakes, Pooch Pines Dog Park, an equestrian center, and of course, multiple playgrounds. Vivian's playing on the playground and Pierce is taking a little snack break. And after a quick bite to eat, we came over to Clamanda Street. Clamanda Street is kind of the hub of the downtown area of West Palm Beach. It's a commercial district with many familiar chains but also several unique restaurants, shops, boutiques, and more. It's a lot of fun to come enjoy this plaza area as a family. At Christmas time, this entire plaza is transformed for probably the most unique civic Christmas celebration we've ever seen. Sandy Tree is a giant Christmas tree made entirely of sand. And it's illuminated with lights synchronized to Christmas favorites. And then one of our favorite things to do is to walk down and enjoy the waterfront views. For even more great things to do in West Palm Beach, Florida, click this video right here. We found this really cool place to have ice cream. Can you give me some more? <laughs>